The Zanari ambassador slammed his clawed fist into the obsidian table, cracking it. Then shouting so loud, bloody spittle fled his fanged maw. The technologically superior Krill and psionic Eldar merely snickered at the primitive 7FT lizard's tantrum. You will submit to Zanari rule, or be annihilated. Rhaegor's forked tongue flickered wildly, tasting humiliation and rage on the air. Your kind are savages. You lack the advanced warships or telepathic powers to conquer us. Zorax of the Creel snorted derisively. Go back to your swamps, lizard. Valen, the willowy Eldar representative, stifled a giggle behind an elegant hand. Indeed, the notion is quite preposterous. Hearing their callous laughter, Rhaegor stormed from the intergalactic summit, his reptilian tail lashing furiously. Fools, the Zanari will make you pay for such grave insults. We shall conquer this galaxy and erect our thrones upon your species' bones. The door slid shut with a hiss. Zorax and Valen shared an amused look. Those barbarians could never pose a real threat to us, Zorax remarked glibly. Valen nodded, still smirking. Indeed, their feeble attempts to intimidate are rather pathetic. Neither knew the Zanari were already launching brutal raids on human frontier worlds, seeking plunder, slaves, and allies to crush the arrogant Krill and Eldar. On the remote human colony of New Atlantis, alert klaxons blared as a swarm of Zanari warships descended from the ashen skies. Disruptor beams and plasma blasts rained down, exploding prefab structures and sending colonists fleeing in panic. Captain Randy Wilson charged out, rifle raised, face grim as he beheld the destruction. Flames flickered hellishly over piles of rubble and broken bodies strewn across the blood-soaked earth. His stomach turned to ice as he saw a familiar splash of red hair in the debris. No, not her, not their son. Despair and vengeance warred within him. Zenari troop carriers landed with thuds that shook the tortured ground. Reptilian warriors sprinted down the ramps, energy spears crackling and bladed tails swishing eagerly. Wilson's jaw clenched. The colony's defense force would make the lizards pay in blood for every inch of human soil. This wasn't just their home. It was now the front line of humanity's fight for survival against the Saurian menace. Rhaegor's ship sliced through the void, racing back to the Zanari homeworld of Xeraxis. His claws clenched the armrests as he seethed, replaying the Krill and Eldar's mocking laughter. They would regret their arrogance. The Zanari would make them pay. The ship landed with a thud on a rocky plateau overlooking the sprawling capital. Regor marched into the Imperial Palace, his clawed feet clacking against the obsidian floors. He shoved past the guards and burst into the throne room. My Lord Emperor, Regor bellowed, dropping to one knee before the towering figure of Kazthul. I bring grave news. Kazthul leaned forward, his crimson eyes narrowing. Speak, Regor. The Krill and Eldar refuse to submit to Zanari rule, Regor snarled. They mock us, dismissing our strength. Kazthul slammed a fist into his throne, sending cracks spiderwebbing through the stone. They dare. His voice shook with rage. They insult the Zanari Empire? We will crush them. The Emperor surged to his feet. Mobilize the war machine, ready the fleets. We invade Krill and Eldar space immediately. As Rigor turned to carry out the orders, a Zanari officer scurried in, datapad in hand. Lord Rigor, urgent report from the raid on the human colony of New Atlantis. Rhaegor snatched the pad, scanning it quickly. His eyes widened. The raid failed. The humans resisted. Yes, my lord, the officer said. Their defences proved formidable. Rhaegor stroked his chin, intrigued. An unknown species that could resist the Zanari. Dispatch intelligence agents to gather more information on these humans. I want to know everything about them. As the Zanari fleet prepared for all-out war against the Krill and Eldar, Captain Randy Wilson stood before the Human Alliance High Command. Images of ravaged New Atlantis flashed on the viewscreens behind the grizzled admirals and generals. In light of the Zanari aggression and your valiant defense of the colony, Admiral Janeway said solemnly, we're promoting you to admiral and giving you command of the Fifth Fleet. Wilson saluted sharply 
I'm honored, Admiral. What are my orders? Defend our space against the Zanari. But we're outmatched in a straight fight. Use hit-and-run guerrilla tactics to disrupt their supply lines and weaken them however you can. Wilson nodded grimly. The Fifth Fleet wouldn't win by brute force. They'd have to be clever, unpredictable. He'd make the Zanari bleed for every world. The Fifth Fleet struck like lightning, appearing just long enough to hammer isolated Zanari outposts and supply convoys before vanishing into the void. Rigor snarled as reports flooded in of human raids devastating their rear echelons. Redeploy hunter-killer groups to defend our supply lines, he barked at the flickering hologram of his subordinate, and get me more information on this human admiral, this Wilson. The Zanari invasion smashed into Krill and Eldar space with unrelenting fury, entire worlds drowning in blood and flames. But even as they advanced, the humans remained a thorn in their side, a ghostly fleet that struck without warning then melted away. Deep in Zanari space, Regor paced in his chambers, talons clacking against the metal floors as he reviewed the latest intelligence reports. His spies had infiltrated human networks and returned with startling revelations, schematics of advanced warships, powerful energy weapons, and cutting-edge shield technology that was on par with the Krill and Eldar. The Zanari had dismissed the humans as primitives, but the truth was far different. Rhaegor's eyes narrowed as he studied the data. With human ships and weapons, the Zanari could actually stand a chance against their hated foes. He opened a secure channel to the human fleet. Admiral Wilson, I have a proposition for you. Wilson's scarred face appeared on the viewscreen, his expression guarded. What do you want, Rhaegor? An alliance. My sources have uncovered the truth about human capabilities. Your technology is formidable, Rhaegor said. If we join forces, we can crush the Krill and Eldar. Wilson scoffed. And why should I trust you? Your kind slaughtered my people. Because we're both fighting to survive against a common enemy, Rhaegor pressed. Meet me on the neutral world of Zelos. I'll share more intelligence and make it worth your while. The human admiral hesitated then nodded curtly. Fine, but if this is a trick... If it isn't, you'll see. The feed cut out and Rhaegor allowed himself a fanged grin. The pieces were falling into place. On Zelos, Rhaegor and Wilson faced each other across a battered table in a dimly lit room. The human's hand never strayed far from his sidearm. Let's hear it, Wilson growled. What's this intel you promised? Rhaegor tapped a few keys bringing up holographic displays of Krill and Eldar fleet movements and battle plans. We're losing. Badly. Without your ships and guns, it's only a matter of time before they grind us down. Wilson studied the data, his brow furrowing. The Krill Eldar forces were vast, and positioned to strike the heart of Zanari territory. What's in it for us? Vengeance. A chance to make them bleed, Rigor snarled. I'll give you everything, weapons, ships, information. Just help us kill those smug bastards. Images of ravaged human colonies, of his wife and son's broken bodies in the rubble, flashed through Wilson's mind. He met Regor's predatory gaze. You've got a deal. The combined human Zanari Armada fell upon the Krill Eldar stronghold like a pack of hungry wolves. Plasma beams and railgun rounds tore through crystalline hulls, reducing mighty warships to plumes of fire and shrapnel. The shimmering energy shields of the stronghold itself flared and died under the onslaught. On the bridge of his flagship, Wilson watched with grim satisfaction as the once impregnable bastion crumbled. Beside him, Rigor clenched a clawed fist in triumph. This is only the beginning, the Zanari hissed. We'll shatter their empire world by world until they're nothing but ashes, as the last Krill Eldar ships burned and the stronghold fell, shockwaves of fear and awe rippled across the galaxy. The Zanari deemed weak and laughable, and the mysterious humans had just dealt a crippling blow to the two greatest powers in the universe. The old order was no more. A new age of war and chaos had begun, with the human Zanari alliance at its bloody center. Zorax and Valen watched the disastrous reports flooding in with growing horror and rage.
The Great Hall of the Krill Eldar High Command shook as Zorak slammed a fist into the crystalline table, splintering it. Impossible, the Krill leader snarled. The humans were nothing, the Zanari savages. How could they do this? Phylon's normally serene face was twisted with anger and disbelief. We underestimated them. Badly. That human admiral, Wilson, he's a cunning foe. And now he's armed with Zanari ruthlessness. So this cannot stand, Zorax roared. Summon the War Council. Recall every ship and soldier. We'll crush these upstarts and remind the galaxy why we are to be feared. As the Krill and Eldar marshaled their forces for a devastating counter-strike, Wilson and Regor were already planning their next move. The Krill Eldar stronghold was an impressive prize, but it was only a stepping stone. In the war room of the captured bastion, the two leaders pored over star charts and battle plans, searching for weaknesses to exploit. Rhaegar stabbed a claw at a pulsing red dot, a major Krill shipyard. There. If we cripple their ability to replace losses and repair ships, we can bleed them dry. Wilson nodded, a cold smile spreading across his face. I like the way you think. We'll hit them hard and fast. By the time they recover, we'll be gone and they'll be burning. The war had taken a shocking turn, but it was far from over. As the galaxy trembled, the human Zanari alliance prepared to unleash hell upon their foes. No world would be safe, no species spared. The age of the Krill and Eldar was over. The reign of humans and Zanari had begun, christened in blood and fire. Zorax and Valen stared at the flickering hollow screens in disbelief as reports of the human Zanari victory at the stronghold flooded in. Their forces, once thought invincible, had been routed by the unlikely alliance. This cannot stand, Zorax growled, his eyes blazing with fury. We must strike back immediately. Show them the true might of the Krill Eldar alliance. Valen nodded, her elegant features hardened with determination. Agreed, we underestimated them once. We will not make that mistake again. Orders were given, and the Krill Eldar war machine rumbled to life. Precision strikes rained down on human and Zanari colonies, reducing them to rubble and ash. The alliance reeled under the onslaught, their defenses crumbling. On the bridge of his flagship, Admiral Wilson gripped the command console as the deck shuddered beneath him. Damage report, he barked. Shields at thirty percent, Admiral, a lieutenant replied, her voice tight with tension. We can't take much more of this. Ragor's image flickered to life on the view screen, his reptilian face grim. Wilson, we're losing ground fast. We need a new strategy. Wilson's jaw tightened. Agreed, meet me in the war room. We need to hit them where it hurts. In the dimly lit chamber, Wilson and Rieger pored over intelligence reports, searching for a weakness to exploit. Rieger's eyes narrowed as he studied a grainy image. There. A secret Krill research facility deep in their territory. Wilson leaned in, his brow furrowed. What are they working on? So super weapon, Rieger said grimly capable of destroying entire planets. Wilson's blood ran cold. We can't let them finish it if they deploy that thing. It'll be the end of us all, Rager finished. We need to take it out now. Wilson nodded, his mind racing. I've got just the team for the job. My best special forces, led by Captain Jack O'Neill. He's the toughest son of a bitch I know. Rager bared his fangs in a predatory grin. Good. We'll provide Zinari commandos to support them. This is our chance to turn the tide. The infiltration team moved silently through the shadows of the Krill facility, weapons at the ready. O'Neill led the way, his eyes scanning for threats. In position, he whispered into his calm, ready to breach. Explosions rocked the complex as the team blasted their way inside, engaging Krill defenders in fierce close-quarters combat. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, searing flesh and scorching metal. They fought their way deeper into the facility, room by blood-soaked room. Finally they reached the central lab, where the superweapon loomed before them, a monstrous construct of gleaming metal and pulsing energy. Set the charges, O'Neill ordered, his voice grim. We're taking this thing down. 
But as they worked, a squad of elite Krill warriors burst into the room, weapons blazing. The team fought back desperately, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. O'Neill gritted his teeth as a plasma bolt seared his shoulder. He knew what he had to do. Get out of here, he said over the comm. I'll finish this. Sir, no, one of his men protested. We're not leaving you. That's an order, soldier, O'Neill snapped. Go now! As his team reluctantly retreated, O'Neill armed the last charge and took up position, his rifle spitting defiance at the advancing krill. The explosion ripped through the facility, consuming the superweapon in a blinding flash of light and fire. O'Neill disappeared in the inferno, a final act of sacrifice to save the Alliance. The loss of the research facility and their superweapon was a devastating blow to the Krill Eldar war effort. The balance of power had shifted, but the cost had been high. On the bridge of his flagship, Wilson bowed his head as the casualty report scrolled across the screen. So many brave souls lost, including his friend and brother-in-arms, Jack O'Neill. Rager's clawed hand gripped his shoulder, a gesture of solidarity and shared grief. Their sacrifice will not be in vain, the Zanari said, his voice low and fierce. We will end this, once and for all. Wilson nodded, his eyes hardening with resolve. The Alliance had struck a mighty blow, but the war was far from over. There would be more battles to come, more blood to be shed. But they would fight on, for the memory of the fallen and the future of all free species. The Creel Eldar would learn the true strength of the human Zenari Alliance, forged in the fires of shared struggle and loss. The combined human Zenari fleet surged forward, a gleaming armada of warships bristling with weapons. Admiral Wilson stood on the bridge of his flagship, the Retribution, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen displaying the looming shapes of the Krill and Eldar homeworlds. Beside him, Rhaegor bared his fangs in a fierce grin. Today we end this once and for all. Wilson nodded grimly. Let's give him hell. The Allied fleet clashed with the Krill Eldar defenses in a cataclysmic battle. Plasma beams and torpedoes crisscrossed the void, ships exploding into supernovas of shrapnel and flames. The retribution shuddered as enemy fire hammered its shields. Shields at fifty percent, an officer shouted over the chaos. Hull breaches on decks seven and twelve. Wilson gripped the command console, his knuckles white. They were taking a pounding, but they had to hold on. Suddenly a brilliant flash lit up the viewscreen. Wilson watched in horror as Rigor's ship, the Fang of Xeraxis, vanished in a blinding explosion. No, he roared, slamming a fist against the console. Rhaegar, his ally, his friend, gone. Grief and rage surged through him, hardening into icy resolve. He turned to his crew, his voice like steel. Signal all ships. Concentrate fire on the Krill command ship. We end this now. The Retribution and its escorts punched through the enemy lines, weapons blazing. The Krill command ship loomed before them, a monstrous hulk of jagged metal and pulsing energy. Prepare boarding parties, Wilson ordered. We're going in. Armoured shuttles launched from the Retribution, hurtling towards the Krill ship. They slammed into the hull, disgorging squads of human and Zanari warriors into the belly of the beast. Wilson led the charge his rifle spitting plasma bolts as they fought their way through the labyrinthine corridors. Creel soldiers swarmed to meet them, energy blades flashing in the gloom. The battle was brutal, close quarters. Wilson's team pushed forward, leaving a trail of shattered bodies in their wake. Finally, they reached the command center, a cavernous chamber pulsing with malevolent energy. There on a throne of twisted metal sat Emperor Zartok. The Krill leader rose to his feet, his eyes burning with hatred. You dare invade my ship, human. You will pay for this insolence. Wilson stepped forward, his rifle leveled at Zartok's chest. It's over, Zartok. Surrender now and your people will be spared. Zartok laughed, a harsh grating sound. Spare this. He lunged at Wilson, energy blade flashing. Wilson parried the blow with his rifle. The two leaders locked in a deadly dance of strikes and counter-strikes. They traded blows across the command center, sparks flying as their weapons clashed. Zartok was fast, strong, 
but Wilson was fueled by rage and the memory of all he had lost. With a final desperate surge of strength, Wilson knocked Zartok's blade aside and rammed his rifle butt into the Krill leader's face. Zartok staggered back, blood spurting from a shattered nose. Wilson pressed the attack, driving Zartok back with a flurry of blows. The Krill leader stumbled, fell to his knees. Wilson stood over him, rifle aimed at his head. Yield, he growled. Zartok glared up at him, hatred etched in every line of his face, never. Wilson pulled the trigger. The plasma bolt took Zartok between the eyes and the Krill leader slumped to the deck, dead. It was over. The Krill were broken, their leadership in ruins. The Eldar, seeing the writing on the wall, quickly sued for peace. A treaty was signed, ending the war and recognizing the sovereignty of the human and Zanari nations. Across the Allied worlds, celebrations erupted as news of the victory spread. But for Wilson, standing on the bridge of the retribution as it limped back to earth, the triumph felt hollow. So many lives lost, so many friends and allies gone. Rieger O'Neill, his family, the weight of their sacrifices hung heavy on his shoulders. In his quarters, Wilson stared out the viewport at the stars, a glass of whiskey cradled in his hands. The war was won, but at what cost? He thought of the shattered worlds left in its wake, the scars that would take generations to heal. True peace would require more than just a treaty. It would take understanding, compromise, a willingness to forge a new path forward. Wilson drained his glass and turned away from the viewport. There was still work to be done. The real struggle, the struggle for lasting peace, was just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.